Hey, how's it going? I'm up early today. I've got myself a big cup of tea. I really require a bucket of tea to get going in the mornings. And yesterday, at the end of yesterday, I finished reading a book. So I have that wonderful sensation of what shall I read next? And I'm looking at my stacks of books, trying to decide. Uh, I thought I'd share a pile of recent acquisitions um, that I'm all considering reading. If ideally, I would read all of these books if I had the time. If we only had all of the time in the world to read all the books that we want to. Uh, but all of these books um, have been newly published here in the UK in March. Uh, many of them publishers kindly sent me, others I bought myself because I'm really keen on reading them. So I'd love to know if you've read any of these books or if you're interested in reading any of these books. Uh, let me know in the comments below and what I should prioritize. But first, I want to start with a new paperback edition of one of my favorite novels from last year, The Seven Moons of Molly Almeida, and uh, the winner of the, the Booker Prize. And uh, it's really exciting that it is now out in paperback because it means a lot more people will be reading it. Um, it's a much more affordable now, obviously. And this new edition comes with bonus content that wasn't in the hardback edition. So at the very end of the, the book, um, it shows a whole list of um, all of the characters and brief descriptions of them because there are quite a few characters to keep track of in this like wild and fantastical story. Um, so uh, th that is very helpful and it'll be a good reference point to go back to. But it also um, shows a map of Colombo in Sri Lanka and uh, different points where uh, all of the action of the novel takes place over the, the course of the book um, as its narrator uh, tries to track down uh, his killer in the, the afterlife. Um, so this would be so interesting to look back on while reading the book. Um, so I'm looking forward to at some point going back and rereading this book and also like referring um, back to uh, this this map and seeing these things. There he is, um, Shehan. <laughs> oh, so wonderful. I was so happy about that win. And also um, the public Publisher kindly sent me along with the paperback copy of the book, uh, this mask figurine, <laughs> and um, so to kind of complement the, uh, the the cover of this book. Um, so yeah, it's um, such a cute little thing, and so glad I can like sort of put this on my wall and now like remember this book and all the happy memories surrounding uh, the Booker Prize listing last year and uh, up until the winner announcement and being able to talk to Shehan on the the night that was really such a thrill and so wonderful. So if you've not read this book yet, uh, really, I would strongly urge you to, to get to it now and read this paperback edition of the book. And speaking of the Booker Prize last year um, with Percival Everett, um, who was shortlisted for last year's Booker Prize, he has now been shortlisted for this novel for the Dublin Literary Award. Uh, still talking about more book awards. And uh, so the Dublin Literary Award um, is a really fun prize because the, the long list is pulled together by librarians all around the, the world um, who have made suggestions and so it's really great to see Percival Everett's book um, get more recognition for that. And it's really good timing because um, he just has a new novel out. Um, he's uh, really prolific. Um, this is this came out uh, last year in the US, I think, but it's only just been published here in the UK um, by Influx Press, um, who are a really great small independent publisher um, that have actually just announced recently that they're taking a break from publishing because it's mainly two guys that are running this publisher. And um, so it's, and they, also have jobs on top of like running this publishing company and and and, and publishing award um, nominated authors and um, so it's it's a really high intense pressure job and uh, yeah so I, I can't blame them taking a break but um, but yeah they, they bring out such interesting voices and I am so grateful for them because I wouldn't have come across Percival Everett's write, writing otherwise. I mean, he, I don't think, I think he was barely known here in the UK um, before um, they brought him out and before the Booker Prize listing last year. So it's really looking forward to exploring his back catalog as well as this new novel, which is a play upon a James Bond type 
style story about um, an aspiring villain who wants to uh, orchestrate this heist into Fort Knox, um, but is also looking into larger crimes to do with uh, history in America, um, such as the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And um, so he, the, the satirical way um, he approaches his story and subject matter, um, I, I really enjoy um, the, the approach to that in The Trees. And I think it's quite similar in, in Dr. No, where it's um, this mixture of uh, sort of social commentary and comedy. And uh, I, I think that's so inventive and exciting. Now I have a stack of new books which are half fiction and half um, non-fiction. There are lots of really interesting new non-fiction books coming out. Um, so starting off with a new novel called The Wonders by Elena Medell. And uh, this is about two women um, that move to Madrid and um, struggle to make a life for themselves there. Um, one uh, is uh, the grandmother of the other one. Um, these are women that never meet, um, but we follow their parallel stories in different timelines as uh, as we follow their their struggles and their um, and their life. And uh, I think this is such like a poignant way of exploring uh, different generations because I'm always curious thinking about past generations of my family life and what must my grandparents, my great grandparents have gone through in their lives. And um, so to read a story um, that shows both uh, these journeys alongside each other and how there are some parallels between them, but also differences, obviously, because they take place in different historical time periods and different circumstances and involve different personalities. Um, so this sounds so intriguing. Then I have the novel Last Summer on State Street by Toya Wolf, um, which has such like a vibrant and colorful cover. Um, I really like this this cover. Um, this takes place in 1999 in Chicago and involves a, a close friendship group uh, amongst a trio of girls um, who all come from different backgrounds and have different circumstances, um, but they're really strong friends until one of the, the girls brings in um, a fourth girl into their friendship group and this causes disruption. Uh, so it sounds like a really emotional sort of coming of age tale of friendship. Now I am here by Chidi Abere. Uh, this novel begins uh, with a very tense situation where an officer and his troops are surrounded uh, by um, the, the enemy and circumstances seem really dire for them. Um, so he sits down, this officer sits down to write a letter um, tracing back, looking back on his life and how he came to this this point. Um, so he um, he started out as like quite a um, quiet and like reserved man, but then he met a group of people in the military, was convinced to join in their fight, and um, then was led into doing things which he never thought himself capable of. Um, so following the emotional journey of how uh, an ordinary person can be led into such um, dire circumstances of of war and the the war and um, the countries involved like aren't named in this book it's all kept um, anonymous so it's sort of looking at these like larger issues to do um, with conflict and and fighting and um, how people are are drawn into this next is quite a different kind of book uh, which is a picture book for adults called bear by Stefan Nospelius and uh, this is a visual meditation on depression um, there are no words in this book um, it is just all illustrations following the journey of bear um, who has a cone stuck on his head and um, a rabbit comes along and tries to help him get out of this and um, it's about their bond um, over a, a period of time so I read this um, quite 
quickly. Um, it, you just sort of flip through the, the book. Um, but as I was going through it, I did find myself drawn into these really striking images which like evoke all of these feelings around isolation and um, uncertainty and, and wanting to be distanced from others but also wanting to have connections with them and um, so I, I did find it a moving um, experience like looking through this book. Um, it's a really different kind of reading from any I've had before. Continuing on with issues to do with mental health and personality, there's a new nonfiction book uh, called Sensitive by Jen Graneman and Andre Solo. Um, so this is a proof of that book and this is the finished copy of it. And it's looking at how uh, many people are labeled sensitive and seem to respond to the world in a more emotional way or take on the emotions of the world uh, around them um, in a very personal way. And uh, I've always been a very sensitive person, um, but this book explores how uh, that that can often be labeled as a detriment um, where people can can say, oh, you're too sensitive. Whereas this, this book explores how quite often that is really a strength in wanting to connect with the world and other people. I don't know if you can hear, but my next door neighbor boy is like quietly sitting in the garden next to mine um, while a cat walks back and forth in front of my garden shed. The death of a soldier told by his sister by Olesa Kromoyechik. Uh, this is a combination of memoir and essay where the, the author uh, explores the circumstances surrounding her brother's death. Um, he was a Ukrainian soldier and he was killed um, by Russian forces in 2017. Um, so this is looking back on the history of the, the conflicts between uh, Ukraine and Russia, how it didn't just begin last year um, with uh, the larger invasion of the Ukraine, um, but uh, looks back at the occupation of Crimea and um, the, the ongoing um, conflict that has been escalating over many years. Dispatches from the Diaspora by Gary Yun, uh, who is a broadcaster and a professor. Um, he was also a journalist for many years and he traveled around the world um, had interactions with um, some significant um, figures and got to interview some significant figures and was there at great points of, of change in nations and the, the world's history um, from South Africa and um, the, the rise of Nelson Mandela um, to when Obama was elected president of the United States and Gary Young was in Chicago to join in the celebrations for that. Um, there are also some um, reflections of like meeting Maya Angelou and getting drunk with her in a limousine. Um, so yeah, it sounds like quite like a fun, like interesting overview um, of looking at, uh, you know, specifically um, black history in um, the past few decades. Friendaholic by Elizabeth Day. Uh, so when the recent pandemic occurred, um, Elizabeth Day started to reassess her relationship with her friendship group, um, as a lot of us had to do as we were suddenly physically distanced from a lot of our friends. And she is someone um, who's always tried to cultivate a real wide group of friends. I always feel like there's kind of two kinds of people. There are some people that just like to have a small, intimate friendship group. And then there are other people that like to have um, as many acquaintances as possible and um, I'm somebody that that has always really enjoyed um, having a small circle of people that I'm really close to and that I feel like I can have a really strong connection with um, but I, I know other people that really thrive um, and enjoy you know having lots of different friends and and I understand the impulse for that um, but I, it's something that I just don't naturally feel but um, Elizabeth Day is very much on the other side of, of the fence. So I think it'll be really interesting looking at her reflections on this and understanding of what friendship means and, and what we ourselves bring to friendships. Then I have another two nonfiction books, which I can't believe both of them are being published this month because they seem to complement each other so well, looking at um, the, the history of uh, Britain through its people. Um, so first is Great and Horrible News by Blessin Adams. And this is 
is looking at the history of modern Britain、um, through a lot of different、um, crimes and murders that occurred all the way back from the 1600s up until recent times. I think it goes up until like the the 1960s or so, and how、um, these events and the public's response to these events, like say something larger about the the history of the the country and the evolution of the the nation.、Um, then there is who are we now?、Um, Stories of modern England、um, by Jason Cowley,、um, which looks at more. Recent history of the country and the public's、um, response to it,、um, from Brexit to the financial crash to、um, responses to the the recent pandemic.、Um, so yeah, real would be really interesting to read these books alongside each other. And finally, I have Cinema Speculation by Quentin Tarantino, which is a combination of memoir and essay,、uh, where the the film director is looking back. On his personal history, how he got into making movies,、um, but also his his reflections on many different films, because he is, you know, an absolute cinephile. Something so interesting about him is that you know he just he doesn't look at sort of the. Just the canon of cinema,、um, but he grew up going to lots of different kinds of movies, and that has obviously influenced his style of of cinema making. And I got to go to an event、um, where he was talking, and、um, and he was interviewed by Edgar Wright, and、um, he who was giving his reflections、um, about this book. So、um, this、uh, this is a great cover of、um, the book, and on this this photo,、um, you can see there's something called.、Um, Um, Katie's personal box, who was an assistant on the making of this film, and as he's been going on this tour, giving readings and talks、um, about this book,、um, he said、um, Katie was actually in the the audience, and this was a box which、um, she had been given to sit on because、um, she was an assistant in making this film, but she didn't have a chair like the the director and the actors, so、um, the, the the crew made this box for her to to sit on.、Um, but anyway, yeah, it was it was really. Fun listening to him talk about this because、um, he's, he's obviously a very vibrant personality and and he's like not my favorite film director like I really like Pulp Fiction but、um, but yeah other. Of his movies, like I've either liked or or not liked so much, and so and so yeah, it's、um, but I'm but I'm really interested in looking at the evolution of him as a as a director,、um, because like I said, the, he has this real unique point of view and so many different、um, references which have gone into to making the movies.、Um, so that was、um, yeah, that was really fun to see, and、uh, also、um, at the the end of the evening because、uh, it was his his birthday. Um, or was going to be his birthday in a few hours' time. After that evening,、um, the actor Jamie Fox came on and led the entire crowd in singing "Happy Birthday" to him.、Um, so that was a really fun and unique experience、uh, I got to have. But yeah, I'm looking forward to to reading this book at some point. So. Those are all of the titles I want to talk about. And、um, like I said,、um, let me know、uh, if you've read any of these books, or if you're interested in reading any of them. If you think I should prioritize getting to any of these books over others,、um, please let me know about that in the the comments below. Or if there are other great books that you've acquired recently that you're really looking forward to reading,、um, let me know about that too. I'd love to hear about it. But I hope you have a wonderful day and are reading good things. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye.